Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. I don't know where to begin with this knife. This is the Rough Rider 038 Hawkeye or Gentleman's Hot Bill. And uh, there's already been several reviews of this knife. When it, when it first came out, uh, what, maybe four or five months ago, maybe even longer than that, uh, uh, several people reviewed it and uh, gave glowing reviews of it. And uh, well, I'm not a big Hawkbill person. I really am not. I, I have quite a few in the collection, I admit it, but I'm not a big Hawkbill person. And um, so I really thought twice about picking up this knife. It had been sitting on my wish list on SMKW. Uh, since it first came out, it's just been sitting there. You know how that goes. You have that knife that's in your wish list and you look at it and go, uh, maybe I'll pick it up, but you never end up picking it up. And then eventually it just goes out of stock and you go, well, it's out of stock now. I don't have to worry about it anymore. So what happened? Well, I'm at SMKW. I'm hoping to pick up a couple other Rough Rider Reserve knives. They're supposed to be new. They're supposed to be on the way. Uh, one of them was the uh, Whiskey Rider. Uh, which is uh, like a swayback doctor's knife. It came out right after I left SMKW. They did not have it in stock. And the other one I've been looking for and waiting for is the uh, fat bottom doctor knife. And that one looks really cool. I want to get that one. Neither of them were there in stock. But I had this um, feeling that I, for some reason, I just wanted to pick up a Rough Rider Reserve. Uh, and this one was there. And I recalled all the reviews of it and everything. And it's like, well, you know what? Let me give it a chance. I'm, I'm going to grab this one and pick it up. And I had it in the store and, you know, very strong pull on it. Nice looking bone. Interesting looking uh, uh, knife. It's kind of short for a hawk bill. And part of the reason it's kind of short was because it has the uh, forward finger choil. And I thought, you know what? It's a cute little knife. I'll go ahead and grab that one. And so that's how I ended up picking it up um, because it was a cute little knife. And I thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll just go ahead and grab it. And now that I have it and I have actually had it in my hand for a little bit and actually used it to cut a few things and everything, I'm like, what in the world was I waiting for? I've decided that this is that tough little hawk bill blade that a lot of people can actually use. This is something that it, it, it's not something that should just linger in the collection. This is something that deserves actual hard use and it is designed for hard use. This, this is a beautiful knife. Uh, so yeah, it's the gentleman's hawk bill knife. That's what they, they said, you know, the gentleman's knife. And it is because it's gorgeous looking. But the thing is, is it's tough as nails and it's going to be able to handle just about any tough chore that you happen to have that would require a hawkbill blade. You know, like carpet cutting, linoleum cutting, um, uh, cutting vines and stuff like that, you know, for the pruning. Um, a wonderful rope knife. This is one of those knives that... Yeah, it, it it cost, you know, two to three times more than this knife easily. This is by Right Edge, you know, and it's a locking hawkbill blade, you know, liner lock. Oh, well, this is a back lock. A lot of them have a liner lock. The ones with the liner lock are a little more difficult to use. But this is, you know, great. It looks nice and everything. But this, well, look at the thickness of the blade there. And it's still a good slicing blade. And one of the things that as soon as I had it in my hand, you know, you got the forward finger toil. One of the first things I thought of is, man, that feels like my dragonfly. Now, it's not one hand opening, but, you know, it's got the forward finger toil here, too. This has a deeper forward finger toil, as you can see. But it's a good choil going on there. And if you have the uh, the salt uh, dragonfly, the one with the H1 or H2 steel, also with a forward choil and a hawkbill blade, you can see 
the resemblance. And it's also about the same size as the dragonfly uh, once you close it up. Now this is not a liner lock or a, a back lock. This is just a, a slip joint, which also means it's legal to carry in more places. But it's about the size of a dragonfly. Weight-wise, it's definitely not because this thing is definitely a hefty puppy in the pocket. Um, well, hefty if you consider three and a half ounces or 100 grams heavy. So, yeah, it's going to be heavier than a dragonfly. It's even heavier than this knife probably, uh, but it's smaller and more compact. You do have the lanyard hole, no uh, pocket clip or anything. You also got bone on there. And it is a chunky knife. It's, well, you can see there, fatter than a dragonfly. Even a little bit fatter than this uh, hawkbill, at least on one end. The other end of the hawkbill is wider because the hawkbill is longer. Um, now, this is the uh, Rough Rider Glow. And if you see it on here, the Rough Rider Glow is uh, slimmer. And that's what you have with a lot of these uh, hawkbills, the, the the Rough Rider hawkbills. Most of them are designed the same way that the the case hawkbills are, which are flat slabs and big wide blade. This is not the hawkbill I'm crazy about. I'm not really liking that one because it's a lot of pocket for a relatively large blade. Uh, it's got more curve to it that I'm used to. I don't really like that much curve in it. This one though, man, the blade isn't extremely curved, but it is got the curve going on it. You have a nice thick blade. You could actually, if you needed to, um, do some batoning on the back of this because that's how thick the blade is. You got a nice little bit of a swedge, which uh, doesn't go all the way down to the point but does uh, slim out a little bit there. You got a full flat grind going on, so it is a good slicer still, even though you do have a little bit of thickness there, which you can have with the uh, Hawkbill simply because of the amount of belly on the blade. Uh, you can see similar, let's look at the thickness. Well, no, let's grab the same type of blade. See the thickness compared to the dragonfly. It is thicker than what you see on the dragonfly there. Uh, blade cutting. The blade cutting, well, the dragonfly has a serrated edge. This is really designed mostly for cutting rope and such. But it does have a tip up here where you can use it for uh, cutting in the carpeting and linoleum and such. And this is a great carpet knife too. But this one, man. You're talking about something that is just spot on for carpet. If you were cutting line and stuff, you had that forward finger twill where you can actually press your thumb into there and get a good purchase. So when you're cutting rope and pulling across, you can get a good strong pull on the rope. D2 blade steel too. So that's a lot better than what you have in a lot of other blades here. Semi stainless D2, you know, so it's not a true carbon but it's not a true stainless steel, but it has enough stainless qualities that um, you're not gonna to have to worry too much about how well you protect it and everything. As long as you oil it once in a while and sharpen it and you know, pay attention to your knife, especially if it's, you know, if this is something you're carrying and using every day, it's not gonna rust up on you. Let me put it that way. But you know, and if you pull this out of your pocket, man, that's, that's an eye catcher. It really is. Grab it back here, you can do some slicing. Uh, great for uh, scoring, you've got enough of a tip there so that you can uh, score like a drywall so you can break it easy enough. Uh, score linoleum with it. Um, cut carpeting with a, with a breeze, cut rope, cut twine. I, I don't know, open boxes with it. This is, this is something that is just going to be a great box cutter and everything else. Um, this is one of those knives that, <sighs> Yeah, great looking for the collection, but man, this is really more something that is worthy of true pocket carry. Uh, 
And this is something that's going to get dumped in the pocket, especially anytime I need to do some um, serious hard work that involves uh, cutting um, your typical crap. I, I don't know how many times I can say that. I mean, this is this is what a hawkbill should be. I mean, it is, you know, you've got a stiff blade. It has a, a bit of a strong pull. Um, you don't have to worry about the fact that it is um, a slip joint because you can get up there with your finger way up there and it's not going to close because your hand is on the actual blade, especially this way, you're cutting. I, I don't know. As you can tell, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I, when I, when I first saw it online, it's like, ah, it's cute, but you know, what am I going to do with it? Is it really worthwhile? Because it's kind of small. It's not as big. But then once I got it home and like really looked at it, it's like, well, you know what? It's, this is like old school dragonfly. Forward finger choil, good hawkbill blade. Once you get the uh, your finger in the choil up there, you got a full grip on the handle. You can get the other three fingers back on the handle. You know, and it, I don't know, just a nice purchase point. Spot for a lanyard so you can drop this in your pocket, pull it out with a shoelace and all that other cool stuff. You've got the um, lock bar, which you see on all the Rough Rider reserves. So you're not having to worry about the blade over traveling and uh, hitting the back spring. Line up is right down the middle. Yeah, like I mentioned, it's it's hefty. It's definitely a pocket full. If you consider three and a half ounces, a pocket full. Not as heavy as like your uh, buck 110 or anything like that, but heavier than this, or I think it is. I have to compare it. Definitely heavier than this. This thing is feels much lighter. Uh, and definitely heavier than the dragonfly here, but and and I know you can also baton with a dragonfly because I have done so. So if you can baton with a dragonfly, I know you can baton with this too. I don't know, just a gorgeous looking knife, and more importantly, just something that is going to function well for people who need to actually have a hard use knife in their pocket because this knife is going to be able to handle hard use and uh, not what you're expecting from uh, or at least what not what most people are thinking of with the uh, Rough Rider Reserve line they're thinking this knife is being made for the collector but no not this knife at least not this one this one is actually made to get used and abused and, uh, you know, worked on the work site and everything else. This is the knife that you can actually pull out and people are going, you're going to use that pretty knife to cut that crap up with? And it's like, yeah. And you know what? It's still going to look pretty when I'm done cutting. And, and there's something to be said about a knife like that. To have a, a gorgeous looking knife that you can actually use and beat the snot out of and uh, come home at the end of the day wash it off and put it back in your pocket the next day and just feel good about it and that's what i think you can do with this knife that's that's my thoughts on this knife um this is a hard use gorgeous hawkbill um, now you can continue to use this one and this one's you know seven eight nine bucks as opposed to 36 bucks this one you're going to use it, abuse it, and then eventually you have to toss it away. This one, I think you're going to get many more years of use out of it because of how well it is constructed. Uh, might crack the bone. That might be one of the only issues I can think of with this. This is one of those knives where uh, Rough Rider really should consider coming out with uh, micarta covers on it and forget the shield, you know because the shield might fall out on, at the work site, but you put my Carta covers on this thing, and man, is it, then it's not as gorgeous looking maybe, but it is definitely still a hard use knife. Anyway, I, I think I've rambled and uh, <laughs> way too much. Um, stick around for some slides, comparing it to some of the other knives I got here that are hot bills.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with the Pies. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.